Hi, this is Thomas with Believe in the Run, and I am here at Hoka at the running event with the Rebecca Rowe. That's all? Jazz hands. Just jazz, jazz hands. hands. Yeah. All right. Rebecca, this is our second time dealing this with you. We did it with you last year. And uh, I have to say, I'm pretty excited about the lineup you have for us today, just because we get so many questions about some of these shoes, when the next one's coming out, one of these skipped a year. So let's get into it. Let's start over here. What do we got? All right, first for all of you today, we have the Mach 6. So we know the Mach has been a beloved favorite for anyone seeking a faster ride from the Hoka franchise, but we put a little extra spice in it. This Tell year. me about the spice. Let yeah, me hold it. the extra spice here. So we know that Hoka's gotten a little bit of flack in the past for some foam choices. So we have heard that and know, especially in the speed vein here, that it's all about going super critical. So for us, the Mach 6 goes top to bottom, super critically foamed EVA. Oh, wow. In a single stack. So you're going to get more of that bouncy, resilient, lightweight foam underfoot. And then we also know when you're moving quick, you want to have something with a little bit more traction. So instead of that injection molded detail outsole we used to have, we added some rubber on this bad boy. For I like it. Now, this feels light. When you talk about super critical foams, yeah. and it's still an EVA base, what does that mean to our consumer? Yeah, so basically you can have a lot of different ingredients that go into making a super critically foam shoe. And there's a menu there from EVA all the way to crazy like plastic materials that you can use in that. Um, for us, with something like a mock, we're keeping it pretty simple here and going with something tried and true like an EVA, but when it goes through the super critical foaming process, you're gonna really enhance the cushioning scores, the resiliency scores, and reduce weight. So when we talk about resiliency, that's that nice soft cush, but then the bounce back. The bounce back. So yeah. when you say it's a faster Hoka, maybe we look at like the Bondi, the Clifton as that really comfortable ride. Yep. In this, you're gonna get that more propulsive ride, a little faster exactly. tempo run style shoe, exactly. right? Exactly, yep. Now, if I wanted to up the game in this and make it more exciting, what would you do? Oh man, um, compared to the Mach? Yeah. Woo. Well, okay, then we're starting to get into Mach X2 territory. Oh. So now we're gonna fast forward to the future. So think fall 24. In spring, everyone has access to the Mach 6. So you have this really beautiful fast ride that's SEF, no plates though. So it's beautiful, it's simple, it's fast. When you want something with that little extra kick, so to me, this is like, I don't know, maybe like a nice little chili mac. This is like the chili mac with the extra hot sauce. All right, I like hot sauce. I love hot sauce. All right. I love hot sauce. And looking at the shoe, it just looks a little more beefed up. It yeah. looks like it's got a higher stack in the back. Yeah. You still have that super critical foam. Is this super critical in the back in the heel? So when we look at the setup for the Mach X2, one of the things we really wanted to pack in here was more Piva. Okay. So in this shoe, we're using a super critically foamed Piva in the top midsole. And compared to the Mach X1, we fit quite a bit more Piva in the forefoot here. So thinking of faster runner, more forefoot centric stride, uh, we wanted to make sure we were taking advantage of the real estate. So we increased the stack height a little bit, added more Piva. And then similar to some racing shoes that we have coming out in 24, we also changed the geometry of the plate. Mm -hmm. So we've added this really nice uh, kind of wrap to the wing on the lateral side. So when you're moving really quickly, that Piva is super soft, right? So it deforms quite a bit. So for us, adding that wing is just gonna help keep you held over the platform when you're moving at speed. A little speed. more stability. A little bit more stability, adds just that right stiffness and torsional control at that zone where it wraps. And then again, like being really sensitive about some nice traction here through the outsole. Let's talk about the plate, because most people think when they think plate, they think carbon fiber, yeah. carbon infused plates. Yeah. What is this plate? Because this looks more like a standard TPU. Yeah, this is a bio-based Keybax plate oh, okay, here. So, Yeah, and we love Keybax. You know, Keybax has been used for a long time in track spikes. Um, for us, it was a great choice here because we get a nice bio-based component to it. And we don't need quite as much stiffness in this as you do a race day offering. So again, Mach X2 is meant to sit somewhere between race and daily training, and it's really the best of both worlds. Awesome. This one looks really exciting. I know a lot of people are gonna dig this. Also a great alternative to maybe going for the race day shoe. Yeah. We didn't talk about price. What is this one gonna retail for? 140 for the Mach. So the Mach holds price. And then we're looking at 190 for the Mach X2. Okay, so it's still getting up there. Yeah. All right, awesome. And drop on that? So drop is gonna stay at five on this bad boy here. And the same, these are actually built on the same last. Okay. So you're gonna have a really similar fit experience between both of these. All right, awesome. What's the stack though on this one? This one seems so a lot So stack taller. we're finally over 40 mil. Oh, wow. In the Mach X2 here. So we're really amp uh, up in the ante on this one, which we're pumped about. And then the upper here too, I should mention, it has some really awesome race day cues. Yeah. So we're bringing in something that's a lot more lightweight and a lot more breathable than the predecessor, just to make you feel extra speedy. So do you feel like this is 
in the race category for Hoka? It's going to be borderline. I think some people might enjoy racing in it, but for us, that's where we still feel like the Rocket X2 is really great for us. So there's a trainer for people who like to maybe not do easy paces as often exactly. as they should. Exactly. Or great like training wheels for someone in a plate for the first time. Ah, I like it. All right. So let's dial it back to spring. So we're going back to spring 24. Yes. What do I got in my hands? You have the Arahi update here in the Arahi 7. So Stability for us is still an important category, and we feel like, you know, sometimes stability customer, uh, customers get the shaft a little bit. They get shoes that tend to look like a little older, a little frumpier. A little so, gray. A little yeah. gray, right? Yeah. Like, and to us, stability should still be sexy. So the Arahi 7 was all about bringing sleekness to stability. And so you're going to see us change the upper only here, going to a beautiful flat knit execution. And in that flat knit, we're basically almost lost it. Almost, but not. I it's so kept stable. It. I know, it's stable <laughs> enough to, to grab it when it's falling off. All right. But the flat knee here allows us to have some really intuitive zones for stability and structure in the upper, build in some breathability, and it's just honestly a beautiful silhouette. We also get a lot of that plushness out of that flat knit with a softer tongue execution, and then a nice gusset for that midfoot lockdown internally. So comfort and stability, and Hoka's known for the J-frame yes. uh, style of stability, yep. which basically wraps around from the heel up into the front. Correct. Is it, and this feels like it's dual density foam, so yep. we're looking at two different foams, and a firmer one is creating that stability. You got it. Yep. Anything so else that adds to the, to the stability of the shoe? Yeah, I, th I would say those extra cues in the upper on this okay. one are really going to help, but for someone who's enjoyed previous Arahis in terms of that tried and true underfoot experience, all of that still passes. It's not going to change. Seven. All right. Yeah. All right, now we're going back to the future. We're going to fall 24. Yes. So you won't see this for a while. We get so many questions about this shoe. It's a beloved shoe for our audience. I yeah. loved it. I put more miles on the Rincon in 2022 than almost any shoe. And uh, I'm looking forward to the update. And this looks like a top to bottom update. It sure is. We've heard a lot about the Rincon in the past that, you know, for some people it's really light, it's really soft, but maybe the durability wasn't what they wanted it to be. Mm -hmm. So the big challenge for us in executing the Rincon 4 was figuring out how we can get everything that people loved about that lightweight, super soft execution. It's like a pure expression of Hoka, but put it in a package that's gonna be a little bit longer lasting. So with that, we did that with a totally new setup, top to bottom in the shoe, where instead of using one stack of foam with a couple little pods of rubber, we actually went to this two foam setup here. So you're gonna have a really nice um, EVA construction on the top that has great resiliency, great weight, great cushioning, kind of similar to what we would use in something like a Clifton. Okay. And then the bottom is gonna be an injection molded foam, so it's gonna have is a little this rubberized? bit- rubberized? It's gonna have a little bit more rubber component okay. to it. So you're gonna get the durability, but without the weight of a traditional rubber outsole. So for us, this allows us to pack in that really lightweight Rincon experience with a little extra longevity so that, that cushioning stays for the long haul. Awesome, so how does this fall in against like the mock when you like, cause they're both lightweight, yeah. kind of up-tempo daily yeah. trainers. How do, how do you see the difference? Yeah, Rincon to me is a great shoe when you just want to go a little easier. So the mock is all about like that trust, that speed, that response. Okay. And the Rincon is really when you just want that hoka, uh, and that softness and all be right. able to really just sit in the shoe and not have to worry about the What's feel. the price point on the Rincon? So the Rincon is going to stay at 125 to oh, see this previous price. Okay. Thing. So this would be kind of your entry level Hoka in Absolutely. some ways. Absolutely. All right. With that great Hoka feel. So we've got plenty of choices here for somebody yeah. who wants more of an up-tempo shoe all the way to stability. We didn't talk about some of the other favorites like the Bondi, who hasn't seen an update in a yeah. little while, yeah. uh, or um, the Clifton, which are like probably the most popular Hoka yeah. road shoe. Yep. Any news on those? Gonna have to look into your future crystal ball and use your imagination. All right. Gonna keep you hanging for a little while. Well, I'm two. guessing with this coming out with a new X, maybe we'll see a Bondi X2. All right, I guess we'll have to wait on that. <laughs> All right, thanks, Rebecca. I really appreciate you taking the time to show us this. We're really excited for Hoka in 2024. It looks like the consumer should be too. Yes, we agree. All right.